Cuthbert's Anglican Church. I am Jeff Ward, the priest here at St. Cuthbert's. We continue our celebration of worship together in the season of Pentecost in video form. We've been doing this virtually each week during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, and we'll continue to do so until further notice. I invite you to please sing along with the music provided by our music and choir director, Dr. Daniel Lee. Imagine a choir of voices accompanying you as you sing. Also, feel free at any time during this video to pause so that you can pray or meditate as you wish. Please pray aloud with me all the parts that you see in bold print throughout the service and feel free to share this video with anybody you know. Please take note during the announcements, opportunities for you to join together with people from our community far and wide as part of our Tuesday community, Tuesday Tea at Two, our Bible study on Thursday evenings and morning prayer service on Friday mornings, all done virtually. Also, if you're having any technical problems joining us, please contact our church administrator, Lori, and she can help you. Also, please visit our website and fill out a prayer request if you wish for me or our prayer team to pray for you or someone you know. And please remember, I am always available if you want or need anything and you need to speak with me. Now, let's begin our worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. Eternal God, you create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit that we may give ourselves today in love and service to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. 
For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. What is good? Evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking and they say look a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of Christ. Two priests on the patio, pull up a chair and watch the show. 
If there's anything you want to know, just ask two priests on the patio. Yeah. Hello. Welcome to our next installment of Two Priests on the Patio. I am Jeff Ward, priest at St. Cuthbert's Anglican Church in Southeast Oakville. I'm Sue Ann Ward. I'm the priest at Grace Anglican Church in Waterdale. And this is Lucy Ward here to wish you a happy Canada Day, decked out in her maple leaf garb. Okay, Lucy, thank you. So today we're going to be continuing by responding to some of the questions and comments that we received after the installment that we did on our talk of the Good Samaritan, that's the parable that Jesus shared in Luke's Gospel. But before we get into that, I'm just going to reread that passage for you so you'll remember what that passage says. This is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 25. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said to him, You've given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling near, came to him and saw him he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers. He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. That passage always reminds me of the joke where a man asks the rabbi, Rabbi, why do rabbis always answer questions with questions? And the rabbi thoughtfully responded, Why shouldn't a rabbi always answer questions with questions? This is a passage where Jesus is asked a question by a lawyer. What do I need to do to earn eternal life? And Jesus responds by saying, what do you read in the law? And of course the lawyer is able to quote the law. And he says that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And then he asked Jesus, but who is my neighbor? And Jesus tells this passage about the Good Samaritan, this beautiful parable, to teach this lawyer a lesson. And it's an interesting parable. We're introduced to a person who has been beaten and robbed and left by the side of the road. And then there are three people who have the opportunity to help him. The first, he is a priest, someone whom the lawyer would have assumed was a neighbor, and someone who it would have been assumed in that culture should have helped. But we're told that the priest passed by. The second person is a Levite, somebody who would have worked in the temple, possibly a police officer in the temple, or maybe a reader, or some other uh, temple duties would have been attributed to him. And he too should have known the law and should have been seen as a neighbor and should have helped. And yet he too passed by. And then we get the surprise from Jesus because the next person should have been a Jewish lay person. That would have been the triad of, of society at that time. 
but Jesus makes it a Samaritan, a person from a, an ethnic group that the Jews detested. And yet it was the Samaritan who stopped and offered assistance and poured wine and oil on the wounds, the wounds of the man who was half dead. He put him on a donkey, he took him to an inn, he paid for him to stay at the inn, he paid for him to have as much care as was needed, which would have been extensive since he had been left half dead. So it was this extravagant care that the Samaritan offered to this person who had been left on the side of the road. And then Jesus, the rabbi, asks a question, who behaved like a neighbor? to that man. And of course the lawyer had to say the one who showed him compassion, the Samaritan. And Jesus instructs him to go and do likewise. In response to our talk before about this parable, we received a number of uh, comments and questions. And one of them was from Debbie from Berlin. And what Debbie wanted to tell us was that when she read this passage, she saw a parallel to the world that we're all living in that we thought was somewhat unique and worth talking about. So I'm going to share that with you now. She likened the victim in this story that Jesus told to our earth. And the situation paralleled from this passage to the climate change situation that we're all facing now. And basically what she was saying was, was that, you know, the first person to pass by the victim, the victim being our earth, someone who you would expect maybe would do something to try to help, and that would be the politicians. And then perhaps another parallel for this would be the second to pass might be the scientists. Now, not all scientists, but at least some who seem to either pretend that climate change isn't real or it's not serious enough for us to deal with or it's some natural phenomenon. But regardless, we would expect them to stop and do something and they don't. And then finally, someone does stop to help. And that person isn't a person you would expect to stop. And she says, in this case, it was a teenager, someone who stopped and not only cared, but got others involved as well to care and to try to heal our problems with climate change. And in this case, that would be Greta Thunberg. And it's really quite an amazing way to, to parallel this story with this climate change problem issue that we're dealing with. This idea that, yes, we expect people to stop because they care, but they don't. And yet someone who maybe we wouldn't have expected not only stops, but makes great change. It's amazing, actually, to me, because you know, often women in our culture are to listen to as well as men. Uh, and certainly somebody who's a teenager, like Greta is, is often dismissed. And yet, through her compassion and her determination, she has raised awareness and brought about change and healing. And I find her so impressive. And I'm just really glad that Debbie pointed this out to us. When we're looking for contemporary examples of this Good Samaritan story, uh, I'm reminded of one that was told some years ago by a man named Clarence Jordan. And Clarence set the story in the southern United States. And the person who was beaten and left by the side of the road was in fact a motorist who got into a car accident and was very badly injured and his car was crashed on the side of the road. And then the first person that had the opportunity to help was a white preacher. But the white preacher just slowed his car down, saw how bad things looked, decided he wouldn't stop and kept on going. The second person who had the opportunity to, the, to help, analogous to the Levite, was the choir director from a church. And he did stop briefly, but things were a little overwhelming. He was, you know, afraid to get involved. And so he too moved on. And it was a black truck driver 
who pulled over, got out, went and assisted the white motorist, called for help, and made sure that he was well looked after, extravagantly looked after, just as the Samaritan did in our story. And I, I find it kind of sad, actually, that decades after Clarence wrote that story, and he passed away in 1969, so it was earlier than that, that so many decades after that, 50 years, and that story could still be told today. Martin Luther King uh, provided us with really a fabulous quote, and I'm going to read that to you because, well, it's a longish quote and I have an oldish brain, and so I'm going to need a little bit of help here. So Martin Luther King is quoted as saying, we are called to play the Good Samaritan on life's roadside, but that will only be an initial act. One day the whole Jericho Road must be transformed so that men and women will not be beaten and robbed as they make their way through life's journey. True compassion is more than, clinging, than flinging a coin to a beggar. It understands that an edifice produces, that produces beggars needs restructuring. That quote reminds me of uh, something I've thought about from this passage, and that is that in the passage we're told that even the Samaritan feels pity for the man who's been robbed, which leads us to believe that most likely the priest who goes by and the Levite who goes by also feel pity for this man. But for compassion to really be expressed, it requires action. And that is what the Samaritan offers. He picks up the man, he takes him somewhere where he can care for him, he you know, heals his wounds, he pays for his care, he pays for his ongoing care, and he recruits others to help him do it. And to me, that is what we really need to take from this parable. It, and that is that we shouldn't just have pity for people who are suffering, whether it's from in poverty or whether it's racism or whether it's climate change. What we should be doing is taking action. That demonstrates real compassion. The fact that we actually take the time to act, to do something that we know is intended to help, to hopefully create healing and to make the world a better place. And you know what? Bill from Hamilton sent a one sentence email that I think is fabulous. Bill says, I hope that we use this difficult time to make systemic change that would help all of the people who our society has beaten and left half dead on the side of the road. So that's going to conclude our installment for today. Um, we're so grateful for all of you who have been replying, responding, giving us input. So please keep that coming. Um, Hopefully, uh, as we go through these weeks, um, we'll be able to keep addressing your comments and questions as fully as we can. But in the meantime, I just want to say, have a wonderful day. Blessings to all of you. Please stay safe, be healthy, and take care of each other. And lots of love from us to you, and love from Lucy too. God bless you. Amen.
Let us now pray our intercessions as we pray for those whom we love and know and those in the community and world around us. The bidding after each prayer today is God of love. Please respond with show us the way. Let us bring to the God who loves us our prayers and concerns for the church and the whole world. God of compassion, take our hearts of stone and give us feeling hearts so that we as the church may be more responsive to the needs and sorrows for all of those around us. God of love, show us the way. God of wisdom, teach all in authority, inspire those who lead, protect each nation from evil and further each right decision. God of love, show us the way. God of tenderness, dwell in our homes and places of work, through all the times of joy and all the heartaches and sadness, teach us to show one another the love you show to us. God of love, Show us the way. God of wholeness, speak into the despair and loneliness of all who struggle with life and its troubles, especially those who are struggling through this pandemic, for those who are caring for others who are struggling with this pandemic, those who are in our hospitals, those who are in our nursing homes, those who are on the front lines. Please reassure, affirm, and encourage them, and alert us to ways we can help one another. God of love, show us the way. God of eternal peace, be with the dying, and as you welcome those who have died in faith into the full life of your kingdom, we too remember them and all those who who have died through this pandemic, including and especially those who have died alone. Remember all of them with thanks and love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. And may our journey in life shine with a star's delight. May our days and our years weave together a wondrous tapestry. May our unfolding story dance with the grace of every blessing. Always and ever, may we rest in God. Always and ever, May God rest in us. Amen.